Lads, so today I'm just going to be talking about, you know, whoever your favourite self-improvement YouTuber is, or your favourite fitness freak is, or your motivational guru, or stuff like that. Just because you're not doing maybe one thing that they're heavily promoting, or you're not really following their specific program, or any of the kind of methods in that exact way, doesn't mean that you're not Pro progressing anywhere it doesn't mean that you're not improving anything it doesn't mean that you're heavily missing out on too much because at the end of the day everyone is different we're not exactly the same and little examples can be stuff like exercises and diet exercises I mean it can vary people are gonna have different forms they're gonna have different preferences I mean look at all of us we have different body structures and everything else genetics and when it comes to diet, like with me for example, I can't have good efficient sources of protein, some of them because of allergies that I have. So I gotta think outside the box. But my point is just because you're not really following things the exact same way as these, you know, YouTubers are or these influencers are, it's not the end of the world. Because at the same time, these are people that are gonna promote what worked for them. And they're always going to try and sell something. Like, it's normal, because it's like if they have knowledge and it works for them. They, why would you not share it? Or, better yet, why would you not make profit off that? But that's the goal for that. There's also profit. You're going to want to buy all of these different kinds of programs, all these, you know... How do I say? You know these books that you have, these self-improvement books. Or just books around any kind of topic to improve your life or improve a certain aspect of your life. You might get into a dangerous habit of spending all your money buying all of these books and one, you're probably never going to read all of them. You're not going to read all of them. Or two, you're not going to use that current knowledge because it's not necessary at this current moment in time for you. You're not really at that point yet where you have to use stuff like that and it could be as simple as you know a business plan or anything else. Nothing wrong with reading but there's no point in spending all of your money at once. But the example that I'm going to make, and this is a self-improvement YouTuber called Hamza Ahmed. And with him, so I'm talking about again, you know, I'm not following or not doing things the same specific way as these kind, kinds of people. Now Hamza isn't a fitness YouTuber or, or um, he's not a guy that promotes diet or anything like that. He's just a guy that, you know, promotes self-improvement. And his go-to guide is things like, is things like a dopamine detox exercise, diet, meditation, gratitude and deep journaling, all things which I, by the way, highly recommend. Because again, there's nothing wrong with trying out anything new. But I don't do things in the same way that he does. Now, before I even did any of this, so he got all of this from the Science of Wellbeing course by Laurie Santos. Great course, by the way. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. So he, so let's just talk about meditation first. Meditation and showing gratitude. Now, I was doing these things anyways. I'm not going to give a backstory or anything, but let's just, like, long story short. I was doing meditation and showing gratitude before, you know, Ham, before I started watching Hamza. Like, I was practicing mindfulness without even knowing what it truly was, like the actual definition or the concept of it. And he was promoting these things. And there are so many different ways of meditating, so many different techniques, and there's, it's endless. There's actually so many. And in my case, it was through the Islamic prayer. So every time I pray, so the, I can't really explain this too well. But basically, you're trying to be mindful of you're trying to be mindful of God whenever you pray. And long story short, after I started with an you know an open mind, I became much more aware of myself, my surroundings, my own intentions, the most important part, and just having a more open mind, seeing things from another another person's point of view, little things like that. And usually at the end of each and every one of those prayers, or just you know every time. I might wake up for example or before I eat my food so maybe if you're a Christian or 
of any other faith, like you say, grace or something like that, you could relate. You're still showing gratitude, so I show gratitude at the end. So I was doing these things anyways, and Hamza, you know, he, well, at the time he showed, he recommended like a lot of apps, like the Medito app, which I still have, by the way, and gratitude journaling. Now, I don't gratitude journal, or when I did gratitude journal, for example, I didn't see the point of it because I felt like I was showing gratitude anyways. Like, usually things I'm grateful for are little examples, which could be just normal general examples of stuff like, you know, being grateful that you're alive every single day, that you have a roof over your head, something to eat, having friends, having family, having loved ones, you know, wearing clothes, for example, having little things like that. But then when you're gratitude journaling, you kind of run out of those ideas and it feels like a chore to a point where you have to pinpoint things down like a pen or a freaking needle and it's just like at that point it's a bit I think it's a bit over the top personally and it feels like a drag so I stopped gratitude journaling just because I was already showing gratitude anyways like you don't need to pinpoint it to that kind of degree now Hamza doesn't really tell you to do that but I mean he gave a few examples before like a bottle in the past and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it, it's great, but for me personally, it just feels like a lot, a much of a drag. Like, it feels like an excessive chore at that point, because you've, you've run out of ideas, but it's fine with just, you know, naming the general things, because that's really what counts the most. And you're still showing gratitude. And then with meditation too, like, there's nothing wrong with the apps that I've tried out. Like, it didn't really make a difference. It was just that for me, I felt like, I, well, I was doing those things anyways. So there wasn't really much of a need for me to change things up. So, long story short, I still show gratitude and I still meditate. I practice mindfulness. I just don't do it in those kind of ways. Not in the same specific way. But the one thing that I don't do is deep journal. And it's only because... Let's just say, well, when you're up in your fields and everything like that and, you know, you're not in the best headspace, you're not in the best state of mind, my first instinct and thought isn't to express it through writing, like writing a page or two because it just, it didn't really help, I'll be honest, it never really helped. The only thing I recently did though, which you could say is kind of like deep journaling, is more, more so the fact like if I was to relapse into a bad habit, I would write maybe a sentence on my phone in my notes section of like, okay, why did I do it and how can I improve from that? What are things I can remember to make sure that I won't really make those similar mistakes or, you know, just like little reminders. But even then it's only like a sentence, it's not like a page full and it's not in the moment I'm actually in that bad frame of mind when relapsing, it's when it's all done. And I wouldn't really count that as deep journaling and it isn't because it's only been very few things and then I would change up maybe after. It's not that deep and that's the, and that's the big thing. It's It wasn't that deep for me because obviously I bounced back and I tried again. And there's nothing wrong with um, deep journaling anyways. Like if I was to deep journal now like properly it would be more so the sake of just writing because I think writing is just you know a good skill to have because a lot of us don't write nowadays we just you know type things up on like computers and phones and stuff like that but long story short like I don't deep journal not to the extent that a lot of other people do and I do I show gratitude and I meditate in a different way than Hamza does but that doesn't mean that I'm not really progressing anywhere because the past couple of months I've made a lot of freaking progress way more and that was more so with my mindset which again I am thankful to Hamza for because these people are still crucial they're still crucial to our journey I'm not going to deny that but I don't do things in their specific way because we're just different people and there's nothing wrong with that and that brings me to my next point when I keep I keep telling you like how we're all different and with Hamza you know, one of the things that I'm, you know, the mistakes that I made when I first watched him was like binging all of his videos because I'm thinking, 
Yo, this guy has so much knowledge and it's like what we would normally do in the past when it comes to these motivational speeches and red pill content or whatever we think we're gaining all of this knowledge and what point is all of that knowledge if you're never gonna even attempt to try anything and you're not even applying that daily and you're not even it's not even practicing it to perfection but you're not even practicing at all so we're not even practicing some things that we preach like you always see that one kid or that one guy that's like so wise beyond his years but he doesn't really back up what he says like a lot of us even when we are in a bad you know headspace we're in a bad state of mind we know what to do we know things that can help us but we don't try and we don't get up and that's the hardest part for whatever reason and i think that's just going to be a time that's different for everyone but hamza was the one that helped you know to give me that boost to kickstart me where I needed to go and that's how I should have viewed him but I never did I never did at first I just saw him as someone who was like super relatable you know we were so similar like background cultures and everything you know I saw him as like or the way he was talking because he's very open about his flaws and everything else and this is why I started to watch him because he was more human than, than a lot of these other people he doesn't promote just the good things but he tells you like he just explains things a lot more and he talks about how he was in you know a similar kind of headspace and he gets it he gets it and that's why when we watch him you know he comes across as like you know someone who was well he was in a way he was currently us at one point in his life but obviously the man made progress and what we essentially do what i did was made him like you know he was the Adonis. <laughs> he was like the face of the person that I wanted to be, the person that I strive to be. He was the face of that. He was that vision, just his face and everything like that. Like he was that person that I wanted to be and that was wrong in itself. It was wrong in itself. And it's funny because as I'm binging through all of his videos without trying anything out, he actually stated in an old video of this, like the ones that are actually going out and trying and making all the progress and grinding, improving their lives, they're not even watching his videos because once you're on that grind, that's not going to be the first thing you think of. And it's right because I'm living proof of that. And the people that, you know, that keep watching all those videos and everything like that, we're not going out there, we're not trying anything. And because we normally, or I always viewed him as the face that I wanted to be. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people did too. And an example I'm going to make is his community, so his cult. And the last time I checked, like the other people that usually promote their own content, like these 16 year olds, and God bless them, I I wish them all the best. Like, I'm glad that they, you know, make, they're making the changes now because I never did that when I was 16. But at the same time, when I watched all of their content, because they were inspired by Hamza. Every word that they spoke, or everything that they tried to preach and everything else, all I literally heard was Hamza. Like they are just another physical form of Hamza. Like they just said, they just say and talk about pretty much everything that he did. It's like the exact same videos, but it's just not Hamza. It's not physically Hamza, but at the same time, those are people who are who've pretty much inherited the will of Hamza. They've inherited his will, in a way. So I just see Hamza when I look at all of these people. And I'm just thinking, well, why am I going to be watching their stuff when I can obviously watch, you know, the main man himself? Like, these people are... I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm trying to use it as an example of, like, how we view these self-improvement YouTubers. Like, this shouldn't be the face of the people that we want to be, because, one, we also forget despite the progress that they made they are still guys who are on self-improvement and their best version of themselves is even the one that we are currently seeing they are still people who are still making those flaws they've just developed you know they have more development than we do but they are still imperfect and with me with Hamza obviously because I found him to be that kind of person and the reason why I binged all of his videos is because I tried to find a shortcut. I tried to find a little 
cheat code and again that also doesn't work because you know of how different we are despite how similar I thought we were we are still different people and an example of that is like maybe a little bit of personality traits and you know lifestyle and everything else you know he does some stuff that I wouldn't do and vice versa we are very different people despite similarities despite maybe similar uh, backgrounds and everything else it's just crazy it's just mind-boggling and I'm thinking if I just binge all of these videos and it could be someone else as well like again I talked about you know buying all of these self-improvement books and everything else and you just rinsed out all your money and in my case you know binging all of these videos it's like I've gained the knowledge but when am I ever going to use it a lot of us have a hard time like just you know going to the well I don't but a common example is like you have all this fitness advice and you've never even stepped foot into the gym that should be the first step not you know how many reps and you know looking at breathing techniques and all of that because breathing techniques are good for um you know reps and everything it is for me it helps but it's just like jumping the gun if it makes sense and let's like let's look at me you know um i haven't got a business yet but then imagine if i buy like 10,000 books on growing your business and maintaining that and things to avoid i don't even have a business yet that's not the first goal in mind and i've wasted all of my all of my money of information that i might never be able to use or I might start using in like 10 years and I could have found other videos lesser videos or like lesser books maybe three of them that would have helped me in my current situation do you see what I'm trying to say if I explain that well like we use a lot of this info where we don't need it at this current moment in time because it's not necessary yet like for most of you if you're first you know um the main issue is like getting started or you know stepping foot into a gym or maybe approaching someone that you like, that should be the first step. And if you're going to watch videos, look at those. Don't go in a binge fest over videos that you're... That's just not really necessary for you right now. So now it's like, you know, with me right now, because I'm on the grind and I don't really binge all of his videos like that and I don't even really follow Hamza, to be honest, not as an influencer anymore. And it's normal because, again, he mentioned this and he was totally right. Which again just talks about why you should watch him more, but at the same time you shouldn't. Well, you should watch him. I'm not trying to diminish the guy, but like if you're on the grind, you're going to want to be going out there trying out different things to improve your life than, you know, wasting like, or just spending three hours sitting behind a desktop like I am right now. But, you know, opening your laptop and then finding all of these different kinds of videos, like, that's not what you want to be doing you know and with Hamza I just felt like not only was he right but I did pretty much what he said and it never really slipped my mind like now let's just say if I find out something that I need so I'm doing everything right right now but let's just say oh something else happened in mind uh, maybe I got injured or something like that so if I'm going to look up a YouTuber or use some YouTube videos or some educational stuff I'm going to be looking up stuff that's kind of related towards the injury or how to recover from that. From a certain YouTuber who like, you know, mentions on how to improve mobility after an injury and stuff like that, for example. So I watch the stuff that I, I need to get at this current moment in time, but I'm not going to be looking at every other kind, you know, every other video that he makes about his personal life or, you know, like another injury that I don't even suffer from. I'm not going to be doing that because I don't need it right now and it's not even relevant one bit so to a lot of you people who are like watching I just think like what I'm doing now or what I would do now if there's something that's totally necessary for you right now watch the stuff that you need to watch and leave it there you got your information now go out and try it don't waste your time watching unnecessary videos that are irrelevant to your situation and god i can talk about this all day man but again with hamza i'm not sure if i mentioned it as well but because we you know how i talked about how we would view them as like the adonis or the person that we want to be like who we aspire to be despite the differences again i think i think i already did talk about it but it's like the whole idea of shortcuts and everything else finding a cheat code 
and there are no cheat codes and there are no shortcuts despite the, the you know differences or similarities because everyone is different everyone at the end of the day is going to find their own unique formula that's tailor-made and specific to them you're just going to tweak it there and now and like the starting years or you know the most pivotal moments right now when you start your little journey to just improve everything around you it's going to be trial and error you're going to find out a lot of things that don't work and then you're going to find out things that do work but it's going to be different for everyone it's not going to be 100% perfect or it's not going to be tailor made for anybody else it could be similar but it's not going to be the same and that's a mistake that I made thinking that you know people like and again this isn't a dig but it's like I wanna just I'm pretty much trying to say like we're all different and despite things that they do that will help us everything else that they that they do when it comes to advice or how they live it's not going to be 100% perfect for us or I don't know how to explain it but I think I already have like we're not going to get everything how do I say it man I'm kind of losing my train of thought right now because this video was like 21 minutes long but yeah I think I mentioned it bro like despite similarities every single method that they have every advice that they give it's it's not going to work for everyone and you know vice versa with things that work for us might not even work for these youtubers because everyone's journey is different but that's just a little video that i wanted to make um i have nothing more to say man i'm pretty tired <laughs> not gonna lie 21 minutes it's a long video but um yeah man if i was to summarize this video up it's the fact that there are no shortcuts. Everyone's journey is like unique. Because I mean like I can elaborate it even more. Like again having a certain kind of physique that you want. I mean it's going to take a long time. I mean being patient was one of the things that I had to learn. Like I'm not going to get all of these results overnight. Despite how much knowledge, uh, you know, knowledge that I'm going to get. Because I haven't applied that knowledge long enough. To gain you know miraculous results. Especially if you're people who are like. You know, you've spent years doing these bad habits and you think that, you know, um, one good piece of knowledge is going to change all of that overnight. It doesn't work that way. It's not realistic. Like, if I'm weightlifting now, I've only been weightlifting for, like, a couple of months, like, properly. I don't expect too much results. And, like, you know, I expect results to show up in, like, a couple of years in terms of, you know, what I... Just what I expect to happen with my... You know body change and all of that kind of stuff and not even like physique but like again a business plan or anything else it's going to take a long time and you have your whole life to improve there is no rush everyone goes at their own pace and before i was like freaking out because i tried to be a perfectionist doing everything all at once and um when i went on when i went on holiday earlier this year I thought it was over, like game over because of how easily I would slip back into my old habits and, you know, all the progress will be lost. But it's a mindset thing, man. It's a mindset thing. Like, it's okay because it was out of your control. And then I was only away for like 10 days. That's pretty much nothing when you think about it because you can always come back and try again. Not a big deal. You know, if, you ha if you're doing good things for like a year let's just look at it from like a year maybe a month in that entire year you've made no progress because of things out of your control or you just you know weren't feeling right and it could be like maybe one week you know at different times of the year but it equates to a month but then those other 11 months you've been grinding so overall, you've been grinding more than you have been not grinding. It's just crazy. It's a, It really is a mindset thing. But yeah, kind of going off topic again. There are no shortcuts. And again, just because you're not doing things in a certain way or you're not, you're not doing one thing that they're promoting or whatever, doesn't mean that you're not making any progress. Like, it's okay. It's fine. You're still doing a lot more now than you were couple of months back 
But either way, I mean, shout out to Hamza Ahmed again. I mean, again, he was the guy that kickstarted me where I needed to go. But instead of like viewing these people as like the face of our future selves or what we envision, we should just view these YouTubers as like people that help to kickstart you where you need to go. People that will just help you along the way, but they can't help you with everything. And I'm pretty sure they would agree with that because you're the only one that's going to make that change. These guys just kickstart you and give you the boost to where you need to go. And that's how I'm going to end the video. I've just freaking rambled on for like 25 minutes, man. But I mean, hey, I think it's stuff that I think will help people. I think it can help some people. Just open their eyes a little bit. But um, yeah, that's it. Otherwise, you know, take it easy. Again, shout out to Hamza Ahmed because he was the one that kickstarted me where I needed to go. He's been a crucial part to my journey. But yeah, that's all I have to say. And um, how does he say it? Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it.